Hey everybody, it is Mr. Levi here with you guys today to answer some important questions. A lot of y'all have been asking a lot of questions, as you should. I love that. I love hearing y'all's curiosities. But one of them that a lot of y'all have been asking is about communion. What is communion? Why do we why do we do communion? Who can take communion? Uh, some of y'all might call it the Lord's table. Some of you might call it the Lord's supper. But whatever you call it, it's that thing during the service when we take uh, a cracker or a piece of bread and uh, some grape juice. This is grape juice, or some some churches use wine. And we take the juice and the cracker, and as a church family, we have a big meal together, essentially. And so a lot of y'all were wondering, why do we do that? Why is that important? Who can take it? And so that is what we're answering for you guys today. So uh, I'm going to pray real quick, and then we're going to dive into God's Word, because that's the best place for us to find answers to those big questions. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for today. Thank you so much for the amazing kids who are asking these amazing questions. Thank you for giving them hearts that long to know you better. Lord, I pray that when we study your word, that it is honoring to you. We love you because you love us first, and it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Okay, so the first spot we have to start with is actually all the way back in the book of Exodus. So there is this very important Jewish meal called Passover, and Passover is a celebration of and remembrance of when back in the book of Exodus, God said for the 10th plague in Egypt, I'm going to kill all the firstborn children in all of Egypt. And he gave the people of Israel an opportunity to have the angel of death pass over them. And the way that they did that is they would sacrifice a spotless lamb and they would take the blood of the spotless lamb and paint it on the doorposts of their house. And so if the angel of death saw the blood, the angel of death would not kill anybody in the house and would fly over, pass over the house. So every year, very, very important feast, Israelites would come together, Jews would come together, and they would celebrate the Passover meal, the Passover feasts. And when we look in the gospel, actually, that you can find this in the gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, a reference to this meal. It's very important. We're going to be in the book of Matthew. This is Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 through 28. Jesus has a meal, his last supper, with his disciples, and he makes some amazing comparisons. So let's read together. Verse 26 through 28. Now, as they were eating, so Jesus and his disciples are eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. So Jesus, in this moment, is comparing the bread, or for us, the cracker, to his body being broken, and the his uh, the the drink the wine or the juice comparing it to Jesus's blood, and whenever Jesus is doing that, it's very very important. Jesus is connecting what happened at the Passover to what he was about to do on the cross. When Jesus died on the cross for our sins, his body was beaten and bruised and ripped to shreds. He was humiliated and 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 hurt in such severe ways and his blood was poured out for us when he did that when he died instead of us because we've talked about this when you sin you deserve to die Jesus took our place he was the perfect sacrifice and because of Jesus's death The wrath of God isn't poured out on us. The angel of death passes over us. We don't receive God's wrath. We we receive God's righteousness. So Jesus is saying in in communion when we take this meal, he's saying just like the lamb was broken, just like is, is when we break the bread, we're remembering we're like just like we remembered when the lamb was broken, we are looking at Jesus's body being broken. 
And whenever we drink the cup and we remember the blood of the lamb being poured out, Jesus is saying that he is the ultimate spotless lamb that poured out his blood for us. And so that leads us to ask the question, why do we take communion? Because Jesus took it, that's for one, and he tells us to take it. But there's also a really important verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26, where Paul says this, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So when we take communion together as a big family, as a big church family, what we're doing is not only remembering what Jesus did for us, we are also looking forward to the day whenever we Jesus returns and make all things new and everything is made right and we can be together forever in the presence of God. And the only way we can be in the presence of God is by Jesus dying for our sins, his body being broken and his blood being poured out for us. So that's why we do it, to remember what Jesus did and to look forward to whenever we can be in God's presence again. Now, big other important question who can take communion? Also in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, it says this. This is verse 27 and 28. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord is in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. So, an important thing to remember. If the reason we do it is to remember Jesus' death and resurrection and remember what he did for us and look forward to the day when all of it comes to completion and we get to be in God's presence again, it is very, very important that the people who take communion are people who believe that. So if you are a follower of Jesus, if you have faith in Jesus and you believe that he died for your sins and that he loves you and that he is your savior and that you get to be in God's presence because of Jesus, then you can come take communion. Isn't that amazing? Communion, the Lord's table, the Lord's supper, is a very, very important meal that all of God's family gets to take together as we remember what Jesus did and look forward to what we get to have because of Jesus, a perfect, complete, forever relationship with God. So, that being said, I wanted to take communion with you right now. So, if you are a follower of Jesus, if you say, if you would say, Jesus is my Lord and Savior, I follow Jesus no matter where he takes me, and I truly believe that he died for my sins and I am his child, then you can take communion with me. If you're watching uh, by yourself and you don't have mommy and daddy with you, go grab mom and dad, ask them, talk to them first. If you're not 100% sure, if you're a follower of Jesus, sit down with mom and dad. If you have more questions, email me, call me, text me, whatever it is. Talk to Mr. Levi, I'd love to talk with you. So go, go grab mom and dad. If you can pause this video, go grab mom and dad. Now, I wanted to take communion with you. And an, a great way to do this is I'm just going to read from Matthew chapter 26 again. So grab some grape juice or some wine and grab a cracker or some bread. And let's do this together. Now, as they were eating, Jesus took bread And after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body. So you can take your cracker and you can eat your cracker. And when you chew and you eat your cracker, remember that Jesus' body, that Jesus' body was broken for you. Jesus died for you. So let's eat the cracker together. Amen. Let's keep going. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the righteousness of sins. So when you drink this blood, you remember that Jesus poured out his blood for you. And because we are covered by Jesus' blood, the wrath of God 
passes over us. Like the angel of death passing over the Israelites in Egypt, God's wrath passes over us because we are declared righteous because of Jesus' death on the cross. So take your cup and let's drink together. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen and amen. Guys, I hope that that was informative to you. I hope that you had your questions answered. If you guys have any more questions, like I said, email me, call me, text me, whatever it is that you need. I'm available to help out in any way that I can. But until next time, I love you guys. I'm proud of you guys. Keep asking questions. Questions are good because if we have questions, it means that we desperately want to know answers. And that is good. God wants us to pursue him. God wants a relationship with us. And God wants us to know more and more about him and what makes him smile. Guys, I love y'all. Have a great week and I'll see you guys on Sunday.